so it's possible to learn a lot about cyclic groups just by thinking about the properties of the additive group of integers modulo n. Right? At this point, we've used the properties of just integer divisibility to deduce this theorem, that if I have a cyclic group of order n, so it's a finite cyclic group, then every divisor of n will have a subgroup of g with that many elements. So we know that the subgroups of cyclic groups are going to be subgroups with as many elements as divide the order of the group. So the next question is, what more can we say about the, the subgroups and the elements that have those divisor orders? For example, um, when we looked at this clock, when I was just doing my scratch work for this proof, um, we wanted a group of order 4, and the way we found a group of order 4 is by finding an element of order 4, namely the element 3 inside of Z mod 12. But the same question that I might ask is, couldn't I have picked a different, couldn't I have made a different choice? Is there another element that I could have chosen in Z mod 12 whose order was also 4 and that I could have instead used to generate this order 4 subgroup? So really what I'm asking is in how many different ways can I construct the subgroup that's indicated by this theorem? That's what we're going to look at next. It turns out that the answer to this question takes us down a little bit of a number theory rabbit hole. Um, and here's how it works. If we're wanting to know how many different ways we can construct that subgroup of order k, uh, k right, then what we're really asking is how many different elements in my group can I pick that have the order equal to the order that I'm looking for? Right? How many elements of order d are there inside of z mod n? And the answer to the question is as follows. There are as many elements of order d as there are numbers from 1 up to d minus 1 that are co-prime to d. So, quickly looking back at the last slide, I wanted a group of order 4. So I was looking for it to be generated by an element of order 4. And the question of how many elements of order 4 there are is answered by how many of the numbers less than 4, between 1, 2, and 3, between 1, 2, and 3, how many of those are co-prime to 4? How many of them do not have an interesting common factor with 4? Well, the common factor between 1 and 4 is 1, and therefore 1 is co-prime to 4, and so that's one example. The number 2, on the other hand, is not co-prime to 4. 2 and 4 share an interesting common factor, namely 2. So we have to get rid of 2 from my list. 3, meanwhile, is co-prime to 4, and therefore there's two numbers between 1 and 4 minus 1 that are co-prime to 4, and so as we'll see, there would have been two choices for elements of order 4 inside of this group. One of the choices, it turns out, is the one that we already saw. The number 3 is an element of order 4. But it turns out there's another choice. Namely, the element 9 is also an element of order 4 in this group. Two different elements of order 4, because there are two numbers less than 4 that are co-prime to 4. That's what this theorem is telling us, how we're going to be able to make these counts. So again, let's think about Z mod 12 and ask that same question, but ask it of all the different orders that we could ask about. We know based on the theorem that we saw before that as long as D is a divisor of N, as long as it divides the order of the group, we can find a subgroup that has order D. And in particular, it's generated by an element of order D. So this is going to be an exercise in counting how many of those elements that we have. And again, 3 was one of our elements of order 4 in this uh, mod 12 clock group, and it's of order 4 because if I start at the identity, 0, and I add 3, and I add 3 again, and I add 3 again, and then I add 3 again, when I do it the fourth time, I've gotten back to the identity, I've gotten back to 0. Is there any other path, cycle of length 4 that I can make around the clock by adding a certain number repeatedly? Right? Is there any other order 4 element? And the answer is yes. All I have to do is I have to reverse these arrows. If instead of adding 3, we decided to subtract 3, then we're going to make a different circuit around this clock that has 4 stops. First at 9, then at 6, then at 3, then back to 0. And so the additive inverse of 3 is also an element of order 4. What is the additive inverse of 3 inside of Z mod 12? It's the equivalence class of negative 3, but that's also the equivalence class of 9. So the elements of order 4 are 3 and 9. There's two of them. 
because again, there's two numbers that are less than four that are co-prime to four, namely the numbers one and three. So there's two elements in uh, of order four in Z mod 12. And this same process should work for all the other divisors of 12. Let's just take a, a quick run through them. How many elements of order one are there? Well, this should be the same as the number of things that are co-prime to one that are less than one. So this one's kind of trivial. We just have to kind of agree. What are the elements of order one in this group? There's only ever a single element of order one in any group. Why? Because in order to be order one, we have to be the identity element. The only way to, to make a, a, a one-step trip uh, back to the identity from the identity is to be adding the identity in the first place. And since the identity in any group is unique, there's only one element ever in any group of order one. So that's kind of a special case. It doesn't really fall under this divisibility rubric from up here. How about order two? If we believe this theorem, then the number of elements of order two is going to be the number of numbers less than two that are co-prime to two. Well, there's only one number less than two among the naturals, namely one, and one is co-prime to two. Therefore, we expect there'll be one element of order two. What is the element of order two in the clock group here? It's the number six. So if I start from the identity, I add six, I add six again, I get back to the identity. So there's one element of order two, namely the element six. Three, on the other hand, is more interesting. If I'm looking for an element of order three, I'm asking, what is a circuit of three steps that gets me back to the identity by adding successively the same number repeatedly? Well, one of them is to add four. I add four to zero and I land at four. I add four again and I land at eight. I add four again and I get 12, which is congruent to zero. So I'm back to the identity. But again, I could reverse the arrows on this diagram and end up with a different circuit of four steps around this clock by instead of adding four repeatedly by subtracting four repeatedly so going to eight and then four and then back to zero but adding sorry subtracting four adding the additive inverse of four in z mod 12 is the same thing as adding eight and so eight is our other element here of order three that confirms for us that there are indeed two elements of order three how many of order six the theorem would predict that the number is equal to the number of uh, natural numbers less than six that are co-prime to six. So between one, two, three, four, and five, which of them are co-prime to six? One is, two is not, three is not, four is not, five is. So it should only be one and five that are co-prime to six. And that indicates that we should have only two elements of order six. Well, one element of order six is two. So if I add two once, twice, three times, four times, five times, six times to the identity, I end up back at the identity. But again, we can reverse the order of these arrows. And instead of adding two, we can subtract two. So that they go from zero to 10, to eight, to six, to four, to two, back to zero, the identity. But in Z mod 12, subtracting two is the same as adding 10. And so 10 is our other element of order uh, six, of order six in Z mod 12. Last but not least, what are the elements of order 12? So from 1 through 11, which of those are co-prime to 12? 1 is co-prime to 12. 2 is not. 3 is not. 4 is not. 5 is co-prime to 12. 6 is not. 7 is not. 8 is not. Oh, sorry, 7 is. I uh, almost skipped over it. Um, 8 is not co-prime. 9 is not co-prime. 10 is not co-prime, 11 is co-prime. 1, 3, sorry, 1, 5, 7, and 11. Notice, I've just named the elements of U12, the multiplicative group of units mod 12. That's not a coincidence. So 1, 5, 7, and 11, those all are co-prime to 12. And so what we expect is that there are going to be four possible elements of order 12 inside of this uh, group C mod 12. So what are they? Well, if I want order 12, and one easy way to do it is to stare at the clock the way that you all do when it's almost the end of our class, or maybe sometimes when it's the beginning of our class, stare at the clock and watch the minute hand go one minute at a time all the way around the clock. So of course one is one example of a generator here. 
right? If I add one repeatedly starting at the identity, it takes me 12 additions before I get back around to the identity. And the same is true if I go the other direction, if I go counterclockwise, if I subtract an hour, it takes me 12 steps to get back to the identity. That's the same as adding 11 hours. But there's more. So 1 and 11 are both co-prime to 12. But what about 5? So if I add 5 repeatedly, what's going to happen? So follow this trajectory. If I start at 0 and I add 5, I end up down here. If I add 5 again, I end up at 10 o'clock. 5 hours later from 10 o'clock is 3 o'clock. 5 hours after 3 is 8. 5 hours after 8 is 1. 5 hours after 1 is 6. 5 hours after 6 is 11. 5 hours after 11 is 4. 5 hours after 4 is 9. 5 hours after 9 is 2. 5 hours after 2 is 7. And 5 hours after 7 is 12 again. So it took me all 12 steps of adding 5 to get back to the identity. Each of these is a plus 5. And therefore 5 is also one of our elements of order 12. You can check that 7 is as well, but that makes sense given the thing that we just did, because adding 7 in Zmon 12 is the same thing as subtracting 5. So if I just do that same trip around the, uh, the clock again by the other direction, then I get the same thing as adding 7 repeatedly, and it takes me 12 steps again to get back to the identity. So, there are as many elements of order 12 in Zmod 12 as there are um, co-prime numbers to 12 that are less than 12, and here all four of them are 1, 11, 5, and 7. So there's four elements of order 12. And you can check now that we've gone through all of these orders, we've accounted for all the elements in Zmod 12. Four of them are here, 5, 6 here, 7, 8 there, 9, 10, 11, and 12. And, just as an observation to put in the icebox here, because of the way that we did this counting, the, the co-prime elements to D, we noticed that, for example, the elements of order 12 were exactly the elements of the multiplicative group of units mod 12. And so these numbers here are just the orders of the group of units under multiplication mod d. So learning how to count these elements is the same as learning how to count the number of elements in the multiplicative group of units. And so sure enough, once we've come up with that idea, whoops, still say 4. Um, we're now in a position to say that being co-prime to, uh, to D means that these elements have the power to generate Z mod D. So for example, 1, 5, 7, and 11 are generators for Z mod 12. Meanwhile, for Z mod 6, there were two choices of generators. Um, they were 2 and 10. Right, can generate a subgroup of order 6. Um, and then, for example, 3 and 9 can generate subgroups of order 4, and so forth. Now, mathematicians have a name for this counting function that tells me how many things less than d are co-prime to d. It's called phi of d, or phi, depending on how you pronounce your Greek letters. Um, and it's attributed first to Euler. It's called a totient function. This is a function that you spend a lot of time and has a very central role in number theory um, because it's a way for us to count um, how many numbers have a common factor or do not have a common factor with d. And all it does is, again, as the definition says here, phi of d counts the number of natural numbers less than d that are co-prime to d. Um, and so for that reason, 5D is also an answer to the question that we posed in class a couple of weeks ago. What is the order of the multiplicative group of units, modulo D? And according to what's on the screen here, that order is exactly given by the totient function, 5D. The problem, of course, is the totient function doesn't have a nice explicit formula. We can't just put a D in and turn a crank for a lot of values of D and, and get out in a nice explicit formula uh, the, the number of 
natural numbers less than it that are co-prime to it. But it has a lot of rich properties that you study when you study number theory. We can maybe talk about some of those a little bit more as the semester goes along. We'll sort of pull them in as they're necessary. Um, but for now, we're just going to take this as the definition of the thing that we've already been studying.